Radio Somna. Dear members and professional colleagues, thank you for joining us this evening. When it comes to meditation, they say an ounce of daily practice is worth a pound of daily mental healing and cleansing. Today's speaker, Mr. Subha Vaidyanathan, is an experienced mindfulness practitioner and has a deep personal practice in yoga and meditation for over 20 years. An engineer and business graduate by formal training, he has experience in various styles of meditation using ancient wisdom of Asia and contemporary science of the mind. He has worked extensively in Asia and Middle East and after spending almost three decades in the corporate world, he left his executive leadership role to prepare leaders and organizations for the fast changing world. In fact, his 15 years of annual practice in silence and solitude has been a source of many of his programs that he runs today. The programs are designed in a way to showcase and benefit from his personal experience of integrating his mindfulness practice with the stressful corporate life. In addition to being the founder of Being Sattva, sorry, a co-founder of Being Sattva, he's also the founder of a, a program called Being, which empowers people to be their best selves and lead their best lives. So let us hear more from Mr. Suba. And as the Japanese saying, Ichigo Ichi goes, let us be mindful and immerse ourselves in every moment of the next hour. Mr. Suba, over to you. Thank you very much, Pratima. And thank you, Somnath, for your wonderful opening and Kala for having me here. It's wonderful to be with all of you. When I spoke with Kala last time, uh, I had not planned on being in India when I spoke to all of you. But right now I am in Chennai. I have had to fly here because I needed to support my family. My mother-in-law passed away around 15 days ago. And uh, it's been a difficult and challenging time, even though we are blessed in many ways in that she passed naturally and that we were able to complete everything that we wanted to in these times. I would say that even in the last 10, 15 days, it's been my practice that has helped me hold together and be present every single day for myself, my family, and all the people that I have had to work with. In the global financial crisis, when it unfolded in uh, 2008, I remember myself landing in London on the day Lehman Brothers collapsed. And uh, I remember as I walked through immigration, the officer asked me, sir, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a banker. And at that time I used to work in Jakarta. Uh, I was in Bank Danamon at that time. And then the lady immigration officer looked up with me at that time and perhaps even today people hate bankers. So she looked up at me and said, sir, while you were on the flight, Lehman Brothers collapsed. And she waited to see my jaw drop. And I thought she enjoyed it, every moment of it. By the time I reached the hotel and you know, within that one week, which I was supposed to be in London on work and also spend some time with my daughter who was studying there, my mind was completely out of control. I was struggling, frankly. And I struggled significantly even when I came back to Jakarta. Frankly, it was a struggle to keep the business going. 
it was a struggle because i also lost a significant amount of my financial savings and also i had to despite all this be my best at work for my clients and to keep my job <laughs> honestly so right so at that time i realized that even though i had started a meditation practice way back in 2004 it helped me a lot in those times but i was still way behind in terms of having the mental resilience to cope with something of that time this financial crisis this pandemic the once in a century crisis i don't have a full time job my retreat center in bali shut down and i'm expected to be present for so many people because i promised to be with them to help them deal with their stress even before this happened i must say though that i keep checking even these days how my blood pressure is it is still normal i still am not a diabetic i still feel energized every day when i wake up and i feel that i am able to be present for many people many of you are also on this call and this is something that you can't kid you can't cheat this you can't kind of gamify something like this right you really have to be present because especially during the second wave that happened in india i had to be present every single day for someone who had lost a dear one yeah so even in these days that i've been in india uh, dealing with this i have had calls of people who have lost dear ones the point is that meditation has been one of my pillars and i'm the person just like all of you i am no different from you and i strongly believe that if i can do this all of you each and every one of you can and each and every one of you who's a senior you can get every one of you who every person who works for you also to do this this is the only tool this is the only practice which does not even need a mat it does not need you to change clothes it does not need any equipment all it needs is you to be present right so how amazing is that that there is nothing which is required no kind of props of any sort required it just requires you so let's just spend a little bit time going through uh, what this journey is about i also want to in today's session get you to experience two or three practices which you can take back and use at any point of time but while going through today's session think of two words one is routine the other is ritual one is routine the other is ritual what do i mean by routine routine is something that we do every single day maybe morning lunch time evening whatever it may be right a ritual is something that you do on an important day before an important meeting before an important conversation right so think of an athlete an athlete has a ritual before race day or before an important match i'm sure federer has one we all know phelps has one we all know ms dhoni has many of the top pro athletes have a ritual so the question is what is your ritual before an important day before an important meeting before an important presentation or conversation what is your ritual so just keep that in mind before we get on because there's something that i want you to think about as we go through today's session come chaos is a program that i started march 19th of 2020 i have been teaching meditation for a long time but medit my meditations are primarily oriented towards as a life skill as something that you can use every single day in your work and life not all my meditations and some of them are but majority of my meditations are focused on life and work and not focused on spiritual spiritual evolution right so keep that in mind as you get through this 
you will all recognize Captain Cool and Roger Federer. I want you, for those of you who are on this call, also think about the two others right at the bottom. Can anyone name them? I'm sure you can. So there is a clue sitting inside the pictures. Someone is holding up a medal and we have something coming up, Summer Games. Anyone knows her? Simone Biles is the most medaled American gymnast. At 23, she has 28 medals, right? And the person on the left, clearly this is with a basketball team. Anyone knows him? Phil, yes, yes, Somnath Go. No, I raised my hand to say bye-bye to my colleague. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Phil Jackson is reputed to be, uh, holds the record rather, of having won 13 NBA titles, 11 as a coach and two as a player. He was the coach for both LA Lakers and also for the Chicago Bulls. So five NBA titles with the Lakers and six with the Bulls. But he's known for something very specific that before every game and before every practice session, he always reminded his team, one breath, one team. So the team had to breathe together till they got into synchronicity before the practice and before a game. So this is something which Kobe Bryant also, you know, the late Kobe Bryant used to speak a lot about. So the point which I'm making here is all of these athletes got to where they got, not just because of their skills and training, but because they knew how to manage their mind better than everybody else playing the game. So if you see, MS always says that his victory is about outthinking the other person under pressure. Federer says, I need to be better than the person across the net on the most difficult points. Imagine a gymnast gets a shot at the Olympics once in four years, and she says, I take risks. Uh, when I get onto the mat or when I get onto my equipment. So all of these people, Phil Jackson, as I just spoke to you about, knew the value of meditation, mindfulness, or at least in their own way, bringing their mind, the best mind into the match, into the game, into their practice, into the event. The question is, do we all think like athletes? Or do we focus mostly on technical skills, leadership skills, management skills, speaking skills? Uh, or do we also think about how do I be my best in terms of bringing my best mind into most important conversations, moments, and days? We all speak about stress without understanding that bringing our best mind into the most important games is what is important for us to keep growing. This is the difference between pro athletes and highly skilled athletes, very good athletes, right? So that's what we're going to discuss today. And you're going to bring about certain tools that you can all use, okay? That is the context in which I want you to think of meditation. I want you to reset your mind because None of these athletes said, I will learn meditation after I retire, which is what most of us think. I will learn meditation after I retire. For now, I need to work. For them, being their best at work requires for them to be bringing their best mind into their work. I think it's important for us too. We are all corporate athletes. And we need to be able to bring our best mind to our workplace, to our life, in our relationships in every interaction at home with our children or partner or our family or our colleagues or clients, do we bring our best mind into these games? So that's 
perhaps the biggest shift I want us all to think about that this is not before retirement or after retirement. It is a life skill, right? Now, through, as you go through today's session, there will be things that resonate with you. Just focus on that because this is an important Indian practice of taking in topics like these. Sometimes we have a debate on a particular topic and the whole debate is what we get carried away through the session. So the way the ancient masters have told us to take these sessions like these in is listen and connect with those that you agree with. Take it into your life. So learn that when you're here and think about how you will live this, how you will integrate this into your life and work. So just focus on one or two things that you will take back out of today as something that you will integrate into your life. The other thing I wanted to say as an attitude for today is, uh, I, I normally say this in all my programs, go from not knowing to knowing something. But if you already know something, think about why you're not able to do it. And if you're able to do this, why you're not able to be it. So just they don't think about, I have heard this before. If I've heard of this before, if you know this, think about why am I not able to bring this into my life every day? Why am I not able to bring this game into my work every day? Just think about it that way. Why am I not able to be this person every single day, right? What can I do in terms of routines and rituals, which can help make my work and life progress. So that having been set up, I wanted to pause and let's do a practice now. So I promised you to have an experiential session. I want to do a practice which is very simple. This is to do with the breath. You can use this either as a routine or as a ritual. A routine is, you can do this in the morning, afternoon or evening, or you can do it as a ritual, which is in between a stressful meeting, in between a stressful conversation, or just before a meeting. So let me just tell you and just experience it. You can keep your eyes open or closed, it doesn't matter. So sit comfortably with your neck and shoulders relaxed. But try to keep your back straight, even if it's supported. Just make sure your neck and shoulders are relaxed. Your palms can be on the table in front of you, on your thighs or anywhere else. Just be relaxed. Just focus on your breath. Taking a few deep breaths. Steady breaths, breathing in up through the spine. And breathing out back through the spine, all the way back down. Inhale all the way up and exhale all the way down. Center your breath, make sure it's going up and down through your spine. Just make it one more cycle, engage your chest and abdomen as you inhale and exhale. Now bring your attention to your chest. Focus on the movement of your chest, of your body with every inhale and exhale. Normal breathing, but focusing on the movement in your body. Now bring your attention to your breath. 
and soften your breath with every progressive exhale. Make the breath softer and softer and even more softer with every progressive exhale. Focus on the exhalation. Until the breath is almost still, you find no movement in your breath. Bring your attention to your forehead and just hold it there. Place a positive intention for the evening for yourself. Something that you look forward to for the rest of the day. Stay with it for 10 more seconds. Take a deep breath as you let go slowly and softly in your own time, at your own pace. Open your eyes and stay with yourself. Observe how your body is, how your breath is, and how still your mind is right now and right here. Thank you. Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling better now than when you started. It's such a simple practice, right? I always jokingly ask people, do you have time to breathe? If so, you can do this practice. Just, it took us less than three minutes to do this practice. The structure of the practice is center your breath, then take your attention to the chest. Observe the movement of the body with every inhale and exhale. Then soften the breath and then take your attention here. Place a positive intention. Open your eyes and slowly come back. That's it. As simple as that. Right? And at the end of this whole meditation, if you think I want to walk in angry into the meeting, you still can but it's tactical anger, it's not uncontrolled anger, right? So it's, it doesn't mean that, oh my God, I'm going to lose my mojo in this meeting if I do meditation before the meeting. You can choose what you want to be when you get into the meeting, but you have chosen it, it's not by default. You, people cannot press your buttons when you walk into a meeting because you're in control, right? So, this is a functional practice, which you can use at any point of time. Natural divers use this practice so that they're able to stay without equipment underwater because the metabolism slows down. So this is the science behind it. The science, I'll just show you the slide briefly and then take you through the science. So it's not some woo-woo stuff that I took you through. This is uh, something that is based on science. So normally when we get stressed, there's a repetitive pattern of the amygdala being triggered by the hippocampus, which is based on past memories. And the trigger releases adrenaline. That's what happens through the amygdala. And then we get into a fight or flight mode. And if it stays on for a long time, this is what is happening uh, in these days because it's an extended period of time where this is going on. It's just uh, every time the amygdala is getting triggered. On the other hand, this, you can use the breath just like we use now 
to cut out the amygdala and let the prefrontal cortex, which is the cognitive thinking brain, to come into play. Which means that you now have the power to choose consciously and to choose and to solve the problems the way you want to solve. Not just based on past pattern. We know that everything around us has changed in these times. How can just past patterns of thinking still be effective? We know that innovation is most important. If innovation is important, past pattern thinking alone is not important. It's not relevant. So that's why these kind of practices help us to be creative, which we can't be under stress, help us to be cognitively sharp and be able to choose how we want to respond. That's what this practice is about. So how much time do we invest on training our mind as compared to training ourselves technically? You know, this is a question which we were discussing, Shweta and uh, Pratima, we were discussing before the session started as to, in these times, we have all stood exposed. As to people who have invested sufficiently have gained a lot in being able to get through these times. People to work this transition, pivoting, whatever you may call it, both in life and at work. People who haven't have struggled. That's the honest truth. If despite this, we don't learn that if we keep getting amygdala hijacked, our immunity is dropping because continuous adrenaline releases reduce our immunity. Hypertension reduces our ability to deal with infection. Uh, all of these are signs of the mind and signs of the body. So this whole thing of what we're doing here is just to give you a taste of what you can do yourself so that you don't have to let the body go to seed or the mind go to seed in these times. There are things that you can do to build your resilience, but you need to train. That's where routines come into play. You have to train like an athlete, which means, what does it mean? It means you just not enough for you to do this once in a while, but you need to do this every single day. Every single day. There is no escape. And if you tell me I don't have the time to do this, I will ask you a very simple question. Today, how many of you joined this meeting and waited for the meeting to start? How many of you had five minutes while the meeting was waiting to start? Why couldn't we use wait time every single day? We all have 60 to 90 minutes of wait time every single day. If you choose to use it for reasons other than checking social media and WhatsApp, or checking the news, you have 10 minutes sitting right there. Now, all of you are finance professionals, the best, okay? And I will give you a return on investment. For every 10 minutes you spend, you will get one hour back the same day of productivity. I'll give you one more reason. You practice this mind training, there is science which shows that at the end of every chromosome, there is something called telomeres. Telomeres are like the plastic at the end of a shoelace, which does not let the chromosome get frayed. You see the shoelace, if the plastic drops off, it gets frayed. Now, when it gets frayed, this is why there's more and more cases of dementia as we age. Telomeres prevent aging of the mind. So I'm giving you right now one return on the investment for the same day and one for your life. And a third as to how you can be better in making decisions, right? So I need to motivate you to make this 10 minutes of this practice more important than checking WhatsApp or news or checking the, you know, whether you had how many, you know, you're in Singapore, right? Uh, how many community cases for the day or how many were unlinked cases for the day. You can check it, but you can check it later after you finish your practice. You'll be better prepared for the news. Okay, so on that note, I wanted to 
also ask this question. How many of you here practice some form of meditation? You will be surprised. Thank you, Pratima. Fantastic. Very good. How many of you practice it daily? How many of you take a shower daily? So this is a mind shower. Either you can take it in the morning or you take it at night. This is a relaxing practice. Don't make this a chore. This is a way to take a shower just before you go to bed. Right? So just construct this metaphor the way you want it, the way it works for you. But the science says that it works. So find a way, a way to hack your mind to make it work for you. Two other things I wanted to share, but we'll do it after the next practice. I'm going to give you a very simple practice next. This practice is called a happy place practice. This you can do anywhere, anytime. A happy place is a place where it's like Sherlock Holmes, going to a mind palace to solve your important problems. So this is a space that you go to. It can be real, it can be imaginary. My happy place sometimes is up in the sky, sometimes is underwater. You can breathe anywhere, you can live anywhere. You can, some people have it on moon, some people have it on a different star. You, you can have it at home, you can have it by the ocean, you can have it by a river, by a waterfall, wherever you want, okay? Just the principles of this, and you practice it right now, is invoke all your senses something that you're listening to, something that you're seeing, something that you're feeling, that's it. And that's your happy place. It costs no money. You can travel despite COVID. There are no restrictions. You can go wherever you want. Okay, let's just experience that here and now. So sit comfortably once again. Neck and shoulders relaxed. Use the breath to center your body and your mind. Just keep it at the center, breathing in and out through your spine. Gently close your eyes and visualize a happy place. Whatever comes up spontaneously. Remember, you can keep changing it every day. So what comes up today is your happy place for today. It could be by a river, by the ocean, up in the hills, down in the valley, deep in a forest, underwater, up in the sky, or up in the stars. Visualize whether it's day or night. Are you feeling warm or cool, cold or hot? Do you hear the morning birds or the evening crickets? Do you see a starry sky or a cloudless blue sky? Do you hear the ocean waves or the running water of the stream or the waterfall? As you walk into the space, what do you see? Do you see flowers, trees, or open fields or a forest? Or do you see fishes underwater or clouds up in the sky? What do you feel beneath your feet? As you step into the space, find a comfortable spot for you to sit down. Lean back and relax. Just be with yourself. This is your place, your happy place. 
a place you come to to be calm to be with yourself and to reflect on the challenges of the day on the questions of the day notice your breath is soft and steady your body is relaxed and you're ready to solve anything on hand to think about it be with yourself for just 5 more seconds notice that your breath is soft and steady your body is still as is your mind take a deep breath let go of the space know that you can come back here any time to explore further to add more space and character into this make a positive intention for yourself as you step out of the space and gently open your eyes be with yourself for 5 seconds noticing how you feel here and now welcome back feeling good shweta awesome lena good so inherent in this practice i wanted to also share with you that sometimes it's good thank you venkat thank you it's good to take the help of our senses this is why you know many of us you know venkat i notice that you do that a lot step out into nature to use the sights and sounds of nature the colors of nature the sound the entire frequency width of nature of sounds and sights to balance and bring us back into the space so we can either use this by going out there or closing your eyes and still going out that's that is what today's this practice of happy places to take you to experience your senses in a positive way so that your senses are not being only used in a stressful way to experience the environment so if you don't have the time to step out for a walk be in a park or you know anything out there just spend time with yourself in your happy place and you will be able to get transported into the same experience right so that's what this practice is about and i want you to know that sometimes it's not enough to close your eyes and sit and it's good to step out and walk the more stressed you are the more you need to engage the body and more support you need from nature so sometimes you use the body movement in nature as a method to bring your mind into calmness so it's very healthy to step out and do this but when you step out for a walk do it quietly remove your footwear feel the ground underneath you don't check your phone and don't be talking to someone next to you be with yourself at least for 5 10 minutes so just be mindful of the character of the walk the quality of your walk of being present with the sights and sounds around you right we are all very gifted in singapore we have so many options right and to be able to go out 
how much do we leverage that? And the last practice for today, I'm going to take you through one more. I think we have time. Do we? Yes, we do. Quick practice. This is a very powerful practice because it's based on the chemistry of the body. It's called a meditation of gratitude. Gratitude helps raise the serotonin levels in our body. With this, we grow in confidence, ourselves, and when you are with people, it helps to create stronger teams, whether it's a family team or a work team, doesn't matter. We get more trust in each other. As compared to when the adrenaline is high, we suspect each other. So that's why you see how the chemistry shifts the way the mind thinks. So this is true chemistry, serotonin. You can check out uh, UC Berkeley's work on this, Greater Good Science Center, UC Davis' work on this, uh, Bob Emmons' work on this, Robert Emmons. This is entirely focused on the gratitude practice. Okay, we'll do a very short practice now. I'll give you an alternate practice, just like a walk in nature. I'll give you an alternate practice of if you don't feel like meditating, what else can you do? So again, sit comfortably but you can keep your eyes open. Just focus on one thing that happened today that you're grateful for. It could be something that life threw at you or work threw at you. Like I said, at the beginning of today, I was telling Kala that today ICA gave permission for my wife and me to bring our father-in-law back to Singapore. I am grateful for that today. What are you grateful for? For what life threw at you? One incident which happened today. It could be something unusual, like I explained, or it could be something predictable, which is, I'm feeling healthy today. I'm feeling energetic today. I had an eventless day. You know, these days, you could feel thankful for having eventless days. So whatever it is, just write it down. Here and now, Write down one thing. You can also use your phone to tap it into your notes. What are you grateful for, for today? The second, reflect back on the whole of 2021 up until today. And reflect on one thing, one person that you're really grateful, not one thing, but one person that you're truly grateful for, for having done something special for you this year. It could be something that the person does for you repeatedly, maybe in your life or work, or maybe someone just came in and did something super special for you. Maybe more than one person. So recognize all their names Write them down. You don't have to say what they did. Just write down all their names. Third. After you finish this, just put up your hand. And I know you're ready for the next. You will be surprised. This is why I said, put up your hand, because you'll be surprised as to how many names come out. Name now the third, name one thing about yourself that you're thankful for. Maybe your body, maybe your mind, maybe your life or work. One thing about yourself that you're thankful for. Maybe just who you are. Just these three things has dramatically shifted the chemistry of your body right here and right now. And the process of writing makes it physical because it engages your body. 
you can do this. This is called gratitude journaling, three things that you do every single day to say I'm thankful for before you go to bed. And I normally recommend my meditation practices to be the last thing before I go to bed because that thought stays with me for six hours or seven hours, depending on how long you sleep, right? So the last thing you go to bed with has to be the most powerful thought. It sticks with you for seven hours. Be very careful in choosing what to go to bed with. I wouldn't say, not, we also have to be careful who we go to bed with, but uh, this is like what you go to bed with. Uh, it's so, so important. Make that choice your choice. Don't make that what the news throws at you or what somebody else throws at you through text. Make this your choice. Two minutes after you lie down, every day, reflect on what you're thankful for. Or go to your happy place and go to sleep in your happy place. What better way for you to experience the night? That is it from me for today. And I'm very happy to take any questions. I hope you got some tools to go back and use every single day, maybe even tonight before you go to bed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Subha. Yeah, I think we have lived some tremendous experiences today. And for me, I know that I will, I'm going to take back uh, these, these practices and going to implement these. So I want to stress on the fact that, you know, we have lived the experience because we did it. So, so thank, thank you for that. Um, members, we are open for questions. Um, you can either unmute yourselves and ask questions, or you can write in the chat box and we can take your, take your questions. Um, any, anything that you want to ask? Uh, I think uh, before we jump on to the questions, I would definitely want to thank uh, Mr. Sumatru uh, to you know have uh, got us this experience. Uh, I uh, would be honest enough to admit that you know to be able to practice meditation, uh, I always used to dread because uh, I personally felt that probably I may not be able to concentrate you know even for with I'm with myself. But uh, today while uh, you made us uh, do that uh, twice. And, uh, you know, it was an experience and um, uh, one, one promise that I'm making to myself is that I'm going to practice and probably make it as, um, as, as a practice as an, as a ritual as well. So thank you. Thank you for uh, taking this time. Thank you, Param. Thank for you us. so much for that. Thank you. So about the last one which you told about the gratitude, right? As you said, yes, we always meditate, do physical exam. That is more important where you said that the chemistry that the body needs. That's an excellent point, uh, which uh, every one of us needs to reflect on us and be thankful to what we are. Thanks for See, that. So Kala, you know, you go to bed after watching something which disturbs you. You're Very letting that adrenaline stay in your body for seven hours, eight hours till you wake up. Go strong, make the body stronger. And this is not just a mind game. This is actually chemistry. That's what I, I want to say, right? Yeah, if, can I ask a question, Subha? Of course, Somnath. So when you asked us to think about, you know, the reflect upon the people you are thankful for, and I was thinking about so many people, and especially when you think of a longer period, like whole of 2021 until now, so I was thinking about all those people, you know, I'm thankful for and the list just continues, continues and go on, goes on. So one thing just, just came across my mind that, you know, like our, our relatives, like my wife, you know, she has been doing everything for me every day, but you know, do we place that importance on her or do we treat someone who has just played one single role, which is a very important role. So do we, you know, do we do that injustice unknowingly or how does that uh, how do you conclude that in your mind? Why not both? Exactly. The, yeah. So, so you, this is something, that's why I say, that I, I sometimes I do a meditation for gratitude, for the predictable, for something that happens every single day, for people who are doing things every single day for us. And also sometimes I do a, a 
practice of gratitude for the miraculous, something which happens special, which is surprising me every single, uh, you know, today, yesterday, whatever. So both are, both are valid, and I think we should feel grateful. In fact, I would add a third dimension to it. If we are not challenged, we will not grow. So sometimes we should feel thankful for people who challenge us. And exactly. that's the attitude we should take, right? Yeah. So it's just a question of how you think about it, right? So this one, and that changes the chemistry and therefore your approach to the issue. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm just scanning through the chat box. I, I think all... I, I just wanted to, uh, if you don't mind, I know that some people are leaving, so I just wanted to post okay. this link. Weekly Calm in Chaos 100. Uh, this is the free meditation link, which happens every Sunday at 9 p.m. Singapore time. It's the best start to your week ahead. <laughs> Okay, so if anyone wants to register, you can register. It's free. You just join in. And I've been running it free for five years and I will run it free forever. That's my commitment. Right? So um, please join. Yeah, Great. go ahead. Somnat, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I'm just gave one more minute if there are any other questions. Otherwise, uh, we'll just proceed. Yeah. I also want to say, possibly, Kala, if it's okay with you, I'll share something called as a Calm and Chaos Experience Kit. It has three 10-minute meditations. One is on gratitude, one is happy place, one is on bread. And people can use it uh, for 40 days to, bu to build some okay. practice okay. cadence. Okay. So what you can do is you can share it with us, and then we can share it with our members. Yeah, it's free. I'm just no, saying I it's understand. free. understand. You can share it with us, and then we will circulate it with the members. Great. With that, yeah. um, so, so not, hi, here. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, thank you so much for getting uh, Subha. I know I happen to know Subha very well. I've been personally benefited by many of uh, Subha's sessions that I've attended over the last one year. Um, I think the, the, the thing I would add is it, it brings in that perspective which makes us realize more of ourselves. Um, a lot of empathy that we all try to exhibit towards fellow human beings in the last one year. I think uh, I felt that, you know, some of these practices sort of instill that uh, innate sense of uh, humanness, uh, you know, so I've, I've personally benefited from Subha. So I would highly recommend, um, you know, for our, our colleagues here, uh, the Sunday session, like Subha said, really sets your week in motion and some of the other kids that he talked about. Um, but but very very happy that we could finally host Subha, um, and um, thank you Kala and the team for having organized it this year. So and good to see you Subha in a different forum. Thank you. Uh, thanks to you Sundaram as well. I think we have been talking about this for a long time, and finally it happened today. And thanks to you as well. Yeah, and I also you know uh, just, just so that you guys know, I happen to know Subha about. Uh, I, I we have interacted, you know, more closely in the last one year. But I happened to visit his, uh, um, you know, retreat in Bali. Uh, fabulous, fabulous place for a corporate get together and whatnot. So let's hope that the travel restrictions open up, and um, you know, it's a it's a wonder, it's a wonderful place in the Ubud area. A very nice. Uh, seven to eight uh, villas type of very small ecosystem, but it can it can occupy almost about 25, 26 of us. So, you know, I think uh, I personally enjoyed it on a personal trip, right? And it has got amazing facilities for uh, meditation and uh, in a very very serene sort of an atmosphere. So I think uh, we, we can we can talk more about it when the restrictions open. But uh, like I said, I think uh, I thoroughly enjoyed Subha's session. So I would yeah. highly, highly recommend some of you to join and listen into those free kits. And then pick and choose what you want um, to further your your uh, mindfulness. That would be my uh, wrap-up note. Thank you. Yes, Sundaram. Pratima was also mentioning in the beginning of each session, like once we open it up, yes, we can do that. Yeah, we can see. Yeah. and uh, do have the live experience as well. Yeah. 
Thanks, Sundra. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. With that, uh, may I now invite CA Sanjay Singh Panwar, our Vice Chairman, to come forward and uh, give the vote of thanks to our members and the speaker. Thank you, Somnath. So thank you, Mr. Subha Vedyanathan, for very interesting and engaging session, demonstrating various skills and techniques to be calm in challenging situation. We know this is a stressful situation and this COVID situation especially, it's natural and normal to find yourself overwhelmed and worrying about what is going to happen next or how we will manage home or professional commitments and emotional sentiments. I hope information shared by you in today's session will be useful and it will better equip our members to manage stress and to be cool and calm in that way. So please accept our sincere appreciation for today's session to the ICI Singapore chapter member and our overseas chapter members also. We would also like to thank all our members for their continuous support and contribution and overseas chapter committee and members joined for this session. Thank you very much, uh, Subha, for a wonderful session. Somna, over to you now. Thank you, Sanjay. With that, uh, we have come to the end of uh, this inspiring and engaging session. We look forward to seeing all our members in our next session. Once again, thank you all. Good night and stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Zuba. Thank Bye. you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Good night. Bye. Thank you, Lena, for joining all the way. Yeah, thanks, Lena. Bye.